Well, hello there guys, we're back in the epic playthrough of Titan Quest. We stopped in Tijia, we've done the side quest there, and just gonna explore the graveyard here. We're about to level up. Here we go. That was the level up. So now we can spend some skill points. It's quite a tricky choice. Yeah, one point in quick recovery would be nice. We should ideally get our shield charge up as well, because we'll be using that a lot. And yeah, defensive reaction, that's something that comes up quite a lot, so... I mean, that last, we've seen in the last episode, that done quite a bit of difference to our DPS. Storm, though, that's a bit... I mean, we've got most of the useful skills already. We only need one point in the Thunderbolt, we've maxed our Squall. Don't really need that much in a Storm Nimbus. Yeah, and we've got the one point in Storm Surge is fine. Yeah, I've put two attribute points in Strength. And yeah, we could get Lightning Bolt, of course, but I think there are other more important skills we should max out first before investing in the Lightning Bolt, because for Lightning Bolt to be very effective at killing, we'll have to have a lot of intelligence, and since we're a hybrid class, our intelligence isn't really the best trait, so Lightning Bolt isn't going to be as powerful as the pure mages could make it to be. We also have Spellbreaker, but, you know, and, and it's, it is a kind of skill that you'd want to max really quickly if you're going for it. But uh, we don't really use it that much. So once again, we could be investing in something more important for now. Alright, well, I eventually got going, and this is uh, one of the crypts on the way just after TG. Yeah? Just quite a lot of undead in here. A lot of sepulchers, so it might be worth if you just want some gold or just trash loot. I've actually kind of always been curious what these plague birds are doing inside the crypt. I mean, birds don't usually go inside crypts. I mean, there's no reason for them to be here. They should be outside. Uh, that's something I always wondered about. If you can see, there's so many sepulchers there. Don't worry, I was under control. I wasn't dying. Alright, uh, and this is just in the Megara Bluff, and we've picked up an epic. See, I found an epic there, so I decided to show this bit, and there's a couple of Princeton plumages there as well that I want to use. So, this is the epic, Gildanthar, or however you, you pronounce it. It's an epic armor. If you see, it's got some nice bonuses like poison resistance and attack speed. So, um. Yeah, we are losing a lot of dexterity, and because we're losing a lot of that, we're also losing quite a lot of offensive and defensive ability. So it's kind of sucky in that regard. We're also losing quite a bit of strength because it doesn't have any strength bonuses, if you see. From 440 to 388, that's like 50 points of strength lost. But uh, it is increasing our DPS because our attack speed increases, so... Yeah, why not? It, is, it does also have a lot more armor. So, we'll try it for now and see what it's like. You know, there's no harm in trying. So, we also had Priestine Plumage here on these Greaves, so we'll add that there. So now we've got 18% poison resistance from there, so our total is now 20%. So good, it's no longer any negatives. So yeah, that was uh, my first epic. No, that wasn't my first epic, what am I talking about? It's my first epic on the epic difficulty, but we're still looking for a legendary, that would be nice to see what the legendary item will be. So yeah, we'll descend down to the coast. Right, so we're at the coast now, fighting Ichthians, and there's, I think there will be some turtles around here as well, in a bit. It's empty and quiet. Yeah, we'll be fighting some undead actually. Actually, something I want to say, in case... Um, you are looking for another good game about Greek mythology to play, I would highly recommend Apotheon. Not sure if you heard of it, but um, it's a pretty cool indie game. It's a side-scroller, but it's got it's got a nice open world and quite a non-linear progression in the levels. And some, It's got RPG elements, of course, you can upgrade your gear and stuff. Oh, and most, well, of course, the most noticeable thing about it is that its art style looks like the decorations of, on... Um, the ancient Greek pottery, so yeah, it's, it's quite worth checking out. It's called Apotheon. 
It's just a random bird flying there for a moment there. I thought it was an enemy as well. Because we've got these plague birds and then we've got these regular birds there flying as well. And they look like enemies. It is a nice touch though to have birds and stuff like that flying around the levels. And I want to show this bit because uh, we met a Ichtian monster hero, Silas Mirkweed. He always appears in this cave. This is a cave in the uh, Megara Coast. He appears here quite a lot. I mean, I think in a normal playthrough we fought him as well here. I can't remember, but I've encountered him quite a lot in this cave. Maybe it's his home place, you know? Yeah, and on, on normal difficulty he was a lot tougher because, you know, normal difficulty you're still quite under level, you don't have that many skills, and you come across him and he's suddenly like dishing out huge amounts of damage. On Epic, as you saw, he was much easier. We're now approaching Megara town. Picked up Prometheus's flame, the Epic version. Alright, picking up a lot of relics. Alright, we're in Megara. I always love that juggling guy there, juggling his vegetables. We've got troubles. Every part of Greece is troubled. Every part of Greece is troubled these days. Yeah, just speak to all the quest givers, get all the side quests. Speak to the merchants, I don't know why it got laggy there. You can sell all this crap. I got just what you're looking for. Um, yeah, we have some useless garbage around here. We've got nice hail hormones there. I think if we find a good relic to put on it, we could actually wear it because hail gives a really good bonuses, you know. 20% to health, I think, was it? Or strength? No, 20% to strength, I think it was, and about 10% to health. Right, so here are all, all the side quests. He talked to these guys to continue the the undead side him. quest. And then to this guy. All the Lucia. All the Lucia. That reminds me of the story I once heard. Right, so we'll be hunting down the three princes, as you remember. The Prince of the Bow, Prince of the Blade, and the Prince of the Storm. Alright, here's another monster hero, a Ned monster hero, the Rodbone. This one deals poison damage. Once again, on normal difficulty, when you encounter these heroes, they can be quite tough. But uh, when you're an epic, they barely dent you. Alright, we're ready to fight the first of the three princes, the Prince of the Blade. And there he is, charging into battle. Polypus, or Polypus, I don't know. Prince of the Blade. He does that rally, which heals him. And if you notice, every time he hits us, it causes cooldown on our skills. I think he's got like some skill disruption there on his gear. Alright, so that's the griefs he dropped. Not too bad. Uh, uh, yeah. We better stick with our current ones because our current ones give us a dexterity bonus, which we really need. Loot his chest and then we're gonna go to the next guy, the Prince of the Bow. And there he is. He aggroed to me whilst I was opening the sepulchers in this room just been really impatient notice he's got heart of oak aura so that always increases his health yeah, still though super easy I mean epic difficulty is almost like a joke if you think about it every boss suddenly gets easier with the exception of a few there are some which get harder like that Yaogoi demon bull in the orient that gets significantly harder there might be a few others I'm forgetting right now of course you also get those uh, bonus bosses like Talos and Manticore, Hardy Loop. Yeah, it's not too great. We've got a robust here and we've got a hail. Although well, hail was the amulet. So yeah, we have got better rings. Yeah, at the moment, I don't want to do the exchanges yet because we're losing a lot of offensive ability and our offensive ability is already quite low. So I'll only change it once we find some other ways to increase our offensive ability. Because as a recap, offensive ability helps you deal more criticals. Right, so we're about to fight Prince of the Storms, as opposed to Prince of the Staff. I mean, the others are Prince of the Blade and Prince of the Bow, why not this guy is Prince of the Staff? But apparently he's Prince of the Storm, he didn't want to be Prince of the Staff. Yeah, he's probably the hardest of the lot, because he's got all these minions and traps and all that, and also his squall attack, which does quite a bit of damage. On normal difficulty, at least, anyway. Aristius. Yeah, I tried spell breaking him, but our spell breaker isn't that strong right now. 
because we only have like one point in it. Mechanical parts. I think that's the first epic one of first epic mechanical parts were found, so yeah, I can't really can't really join it with anything. And once you kill all three princes, you come back to these guys. So the skeletons will trouble us no more. So the skeletons will trouble us no more? Nope. Where's my money? You give me no money. You only give me experience. So yeah, I've completed the side quest. And now we're gonna teleport back and fight the Polyphemus. I've already traveled there, so here we go. Polyphemus. If you recall, he was kinda tough on normal. I can't remember if I ever told the story, I think I did. The very first time I've ever encountered him on normal difficulty, the, my very first playthrough. I actually finding him so hard I, that I actually thought that you had to outrun him. So I ended up not fighting, I just led him back to the Kirata forest, went around in a circle and then carried on and he just stayed there looking for me. So yeah, here we go. I let him kill all the guys because I don't want them stealing my experience. Nobody steals from me. If you remember his roar, you need vitality resistance to negate it because it deals a percentage health reduction. Alright, it's good. Nothing for us, just there eating the dirt. Alright, uh, let's see what he's got. Majestic chest. And nothing. You suck, mate. You only give me gold. I have no use for this gold, I'm already a millionaire. Alright, so this is the uh, next coast, the Halcyon coast, straight after Polyphemus. Pretty much the same as Megara Coast. We're about to do that uh, side quest for about the, um, the wreckage side quest, if you remember. It's a bit off the main path, so it is quite easy to miss. And uh, yes, here it is. You just gotta kill every single one of these rats, and as soon as you kill the last one, the side quest gets completed. These rats seem to be able to, to withstand quite a lot of damage. No idea how they do that. And he goes quite a lot of them, and it's quite an enclosed space as well. Ta da! Here we go. And then you can loot to your own pleasure. Zeus is Thunderbolt. That would be our third piece. You see, we already had two there. This is the third piece. Complete it. And the uh, completion bonus is 5% chance of 3 seconds of stun. It's not too bad actually. Because 3 seconds of stun could be quite valuable. Alright, I've also found Valor of Achilles. Here we go, we can add it onto our weapon now. This would be the second piece, which it would increase... There we go, it increased our DPS from 527 to 541. Once we add the third piece, we'll also get a completion bonus. So hopefully, we'll manage to, it will manage to make quite a difference. I can't remember what the default completion bonus was on Achilles. Because if you complete the relic or charm whilst it's already equipped, then you get the same bonus every time. Can't really recall what the Achilles one was. Alright, well, it's already night time and we are at the end of Halcyon Coast. So I shall wrap up these last few bits. And I shall stop around here. I think in the next episode will be... Oh yes, it will be the Ambrosos farm lines and stuff. Probably get to the Olive Grove as well. I'm not sure if we'll get to Delphi though. We'll see. Depends how much interesting stuff I'll have to show. Alright, so our character needs night's good night's sleep and she'll wake up in the morning to continue the journey. So I'll see you guys later. Bye bye.